Have you ever been like, it's 2022, I wonder what film camera I should get? Well, buddy, you're in the right place. And thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. In the last few years, there's been a total resurgence of shooting film. We're not blaming any one person for leading that charge. We're just here to point you in the direction of a few different film cameras that you could check out in 2022 that might fit your various budgets, needs, and experience. But seriously, I just checked, and at the time of this video, the film camera that Kendall Jenner promoted in 2017 on The Tonight Show that used to sell for $200 a pop just sold for three grand yesterday. Absolutely bonkers. Absolutely. Please note that these are just our opinions that we'd give to a family member or a friend who's interested. There are so many great choices that we won't mention in this video. And a good thing to keep in mind is that if you treat them well, most film cameras will retain their value and hey, may even go up in value, especially if the camera is no longer made and a celebrity tweets about it. Let's get into it. So if you're someone who's not really into the nuances and specs of film cameras, you're really just looking for a fun party camera to capture photos of your family and friends and dogs, we're gonna hit you with a few options that could work for three different budgets. If your budget isn't three grand and you want an affordable film camera that'll achieve that look you're probably after without breaking the bank, we think that the Yashica MF1 might be exactly what you're after for only $60, brand new on B&H. This 35 millimeter film camera has a focal length of 31 millimeters, which is right in between our two favorite focal lengths, the 35 and the 24, and it has an aperture of 11, which will do just fine. The shutter speed is 1 1 of a second, which is a totally acceptable shutter speed for shooting portraits and landscapes when adequate light is present. It also has a built-in flash, so you can shoot in low light or get that American Apparel Party Flash 5 in daylight. Overall, we'd jump on this one before the Beebs blows it up or whatever. If your belt is a little bit looser and you're savvy at the old eBay, the Yashica T4 might be exactly what you're after. You're not gonna find this one brand new on B&H, and if you find it brand new on eBay, it'll surely be priced higher than you wanna pay, but you can often find it used for between $200 and $400. And who doesn't love recycling? And talk, save the planet. So why the Yashica T4, you ask? Well, there's a boatload of reasons. The body is encased in plastic, so it truly is a lightweight, everyday carry that makes bringing it with you wherever you go a total cinch. It has a built-in 35 millimeter Zeiss lens with a 3.5 aperture and spot on autofocus, just shy of the f2.8 of the Contax T2. Like the MF1, it also has a built-in flash. Here are some sample photos if you need any more convincing. This little girl is basically like an SLR in a tidy compact body. She's really sturdy, your budget is also sturdy, well then the Nikon 35 Ti might just be a match made in 35 millimeter heaven. This camera is a close competitor of that Contax T2 everyone wants, but it won't break the bank nearly as badly. Right now, you can find this baddie used for right around a thousand bucks on eBay. Let's get into why we think you're gonna like it. It's made out of titanium, hence the T, and has the feel of a more traditional film camera, if that's your thing. It also has built-in matrix metering to help you nail that exposure. SLRs or single lens reflex cameras are cameras that usually utilize a mirror and prism system. And this allows the photographer to see what the image will look like through the viewfinder, which makes it a great camera for beginner film photographers, especially those who are already used to shooting on DSLRs. Today, we're gonna to talk about our top three picks for SLRs for three different budgets, starting with the lowest price. First introduced in 1981, the Minolta X700 is a great option for an affordable SLR film camera. We shot with it back in this video, and it's got just about all the features you need in an entry-level SLR. There's program, aperture, priority, and manual modes, so if you wanna use it more like a point and shoot, you can switch it to program mode, but if you prefer more hands-on control, you've got that available as well. And you can pick up very affordable lenses on eBay. You can also purchase the body usually between $100 and $150 used. Except the light meter, the Nikon FM2 is fully mechanical. It has a vertical titanium shutter with speeds between one second and one four thousandth of a second. It also has a dedicated double exposure mode if that's something you're into. You've got a wide array of Nikon F lenses to use with this camera as well. It has a durable body and it's lightweight, clocking 540 grams or just 1.19 pounds. 
You can pick up the body used in the $300 to $500 range. Released in 2000, the EOS 1.5 was the last model of professional level film cameras made by Canon. If you're coming over from the DSLR world, you may find a more modern camera like this has a lot of the features that you've been accustomed to over in the digital world. You have five different metering modes, high speed continuous shooting, and autofocus. It has a 45 point autofocus area and subject tracking. It's compatible with other EF lenses, so you have a lot of options in that department. The shutter speed ranges from 30 seconds to 1 8,000th of a second and an automatic film advanced system. When it comes to mid-level SLRs, there are a lot of solid options. So if you want a few more recommendations, you could check out the Olympus OM-1, the Nikon F2, and the Canon AE-1. For a budget option, check out the Yashica Mat EM camera. This is a TLR twin lens reflex, which takes six by six negatives with 120 film. It has a waist level viewfinder, so you look through the top to compose your shot. And if you've never shot with this type of viewfinder before, it flips the left and the right when you look through it. So it can be a bit disorienting at first and take some time to get used to. It has an 80 millimeter F 3.5 lens, has a built-in light meter. It's small, compact, and durable. You can usually find these cameras between $100 and $200. The Pentax 6.7 is one of the most popular SLR medium format cameras and for a good reason. The GoTo 105 f2.4 lens is phenomenal for portraits and as the name implies, will produce six by seven centimeter negatives. Now the camera is electromechanical, so it does rely on a battery to operate. You do have a wide range of lenses available too, which is really great. And you can also switch out the prism. So if your 6.7 doesn't have a light meter, you could swap it out for one that does. This camera is a hefty one to put it mildly though. The body with the 105 millimeter weighs 2.3 kilos or 5.1 pounds. The Mimiya RZ67 is another super popular medium format SLR camera. It is incredibly modular, so you can switch out the lenses, viewfinders, film backs, etc. So while it does have a waist level viewfinder, if you want it to shoot eye level, you can get the prism finder and you'd be good to go. One thing that's also pretty cool is the revolving back. You can rotate the back 90 degrees to change the orientation of your composition from landscape to portrait. Since it has a leaf shutter, it allows for flash sync speeds up to 1 400th of a second which is really useful. One of the downsides of this camera is it's not very ergonomic. It's really designed more for tripod use since there's not really a great way to grip the camera. It's also super heavy. With a 110 millimeter lens, it weighs about 2.4 kilos or 5.3 pounds, making it even heavier than the Pentax 6.7. But the results you can get from this camera are pretty freaking stunning. Okay, ready? Now. Squarespace! All right, my first time making a website. I'm a little nervous, but I'm excited. Let's do this. I'm already done making my website. Are you surprised? I am. I'm really impressed with Squarespace's blogging tools. Yay. Whoa, they've got email campaigns? I'm totally gonna send one. <sighs> that was totally worth it. Look at all this traffic overview. It's all right here. A year ago, I didn't think I could have my own beautiful website, but Squarespace made it so easy.
Thank you. This year, give yourself the gift of your own beautiful website with Squarespace. Save 10% when you use the code MANGOSTREET at checkout. Head to the link in our description to get started. As a reminder, these are just some suggestions we think are worth checking out. If you've got some suggestions of your own, up our engagement. I mean, leave us a comment with your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't already. And hitting that thumbs up button on this video will go a long way to help us out. We'll see you in the next one.